What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am and today I've got a story time for y'all I know you're going to love that was sent in to me about how this guy got revenge on his like evil boss before we get into it, though, be sure to press the like button or no joke, no scam, your boss is going to be evil. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Nice rack in our ass Brazilian, just turned 21, but my bank's a million. All right, so the person that sent this in to me basically had just graduated college and had gotten a job at this advertising company. And, you know, whenever you get your first, like, serious job, you don't really know what to expect in the, the corporate world or, like, really understand what should and shouldn't be allowed. And at first, he had this manager that he worked for at this advertising company that was great. He was super accommodating to everybody's schedules. He was encouraging. If you had a good idea, he would, like, let you get the credit for it. But somewhere along the line, after working for a few months, he got promoted, obviously, because he was a good manager. And the person that they replaced him with absolutely sucked. And that's what makes it hurt even more. You know, if you get a job and the manager sucks, it just kind of is what it is. You're used to it. But if you go from, like, a great manager to a bad manager the difference is night and day you know what I mean you can't go from like casual Fridays and you know being able to eat donuts in the office to like a guy that refuses to buy coffee because it's cutting into expenses and tell me that it's a great change and especially for whatever reason the subscriber in this guy really butted heads the way that this manager introduced himself though alone goes to show that he really doesn't know how to get people on his side I've never understood why like a manager or a teacher or a boss would ever want their first interaction to be like super intimidating and getting rid of something fun I think a lot of people are like it'll let them know that I mean business but all it really does is make a first impression that you're not gonna be fun to work with and the first interaction that this guy thought would be a great idea Idea for his new business or like his new department that he was now the manager of was to go in and take away office birthdays like I guess one of the things that they did at this particular department in this advertising company before under the old manager was have like really cool birthday parties well apparently that was a no-go anymore like that was no longer going to be allowed because it was too distracting and that's how the boss introduced himself and the first thing he did was and listen man I'm not saying that I office birthdays wouldn't cut into profits or cut into your time but I'm also saying that like when you're introducing yourself as the boss it's probably not a good idea to tell them that something they like is going away forever and on top of that he just started being like insanely demanding with deadlines you know obviously when you work in advertising you got to have ads done on a certain time deadlines are gonna happen but it would be a situation of like all right if something was due on the 21st he just wanted it done on the 5th instead and they're like well why do we need to have this done 16 days early and he would just be like because I said so no explanation this obviously led to like a lot more overtime and crunching hours so everybody in this department was just becoming more and more miserable because this guy was just not very good at being a boss. And while everybody had kind of hated this new manager, for whatever reason, the manager really did not like the subscriber, right? Like, I don't know if it was because the guy was young, it was his first job, he's new or what, but he, like, particularly picked on him. Anytime that something needed to have somebody stay late, it was on his plate. Anytime somebody needed to, you know, do something crappy, that was his job. If there was ever a situation where they needed somebody to work a holiday, it was always on this guy. And for a while, he's like, whatever, I'm new, I'm just gonna kind of deal with it, but... Even after people were hired after him, he kept getting all the crappy work. So he starts to realize that like, okay, this guy probably just kind of has it out for me. But the straw that really broke the camel's back for him is they got this like potential client that they were going to make this advertisement thing for. And they had an absolutely huge marketing budget, right? So obviously it became like one of the most important projects there. And it was assigned to their division. And instead of making it a team project and all working together or, you know, maybe rubbing your brains together to come up with an idea and then letting one person run with it, the manager just decides to put it all on this subscriber's back. And it's due in like two weeks. It's an insane amount of work. And he basically ends up having to work like 90 hours a week until this thing is done. And it's so intense that, you know, he, he literally like works through his birthday. He had thrown a birthday party and while he was there, dude, his boss had texted him and basically been like, you do realize this deadline is coming up. And if you don't get in here and get work done, then, you know, it's probably not going to get done. 
done. And when he explained that, like, it was his birthday, he basically said, if you don't come into the office and start working now, on a weekend, like, late in the night, by the way, then I'm going to fire you type of vibe. Like, that was the type of guy that this manager was. And once somebody threatens to fire you during your birthday party when you've already been working 90 hours a week of overtime... Well, not all of that is overtime. You guys get what I'm saying. And they're still demanding more out of you. I don't blame this guy for getting to the point where he's like, screw this job. I don't care if I have to go get another one. I just don't really feel like doing this anymore. And so the project is coming to a close and he's like, after the project, I'm going to talk to my higher higher ups about maybe moving departments or getting a new manager. And if that doesn't work and they deny me, then like, I'm just going to quit. And so he goes in, he finishes the project, it ruins his birthday, but he finishes the entire advertisement pitch and he's really, really proud of it because he's been working on it like crazy. And he's done literally everything himself. Nobody helped him brainstorm any ideas, nobody helped him come up with any of the graphic design, nobody helped him, you know, like come up with any of the, the strategies that they were going to do. Literally every single thing about this advertising project that they were going to pitch to this huge company was done by this particular worker, right? And so the meeting day comes and he's very excited. He thinks he's going to get a chance to really impress, you know, the corporate officers, maybe get himself in line for a promotion or something. It's his first job. So he's stoked and they get in there and his manager, who he hates, that's been working him to the bone, basically is like, Oh, I did this all. Yeah, all of these ideas were mine, you know. I've been working really hard on this. I've been putting in all these hours of overtime. And, you know, it's just really been a project that I've been doing myself. And obviously, this situation really pisses off the subscriber, dude. Like, imagine you've been the guy putting in 90 hours a week to get this done. You walk into the presentation. Your boss presents it and goes, I did this all by myself, by the way. And he gets so mad that usually you would keep your mouth shut till after the meeting. But he just pipes off during the meeting he's like that's bullcrap you've been working me to the bone to get this done i literally had to leave my birthday party to come here and work and get this done and you're gonna sit here and say that you did it all yourself and his manager in front of everybody is like well your contribution in particular was especially small so you might as well just not try to criticize me at all and he literally can't believe what he's hearing right he's like my contribution was small you literally called me in on my birthday and so at that point, he just can't believe how ridiculous this is. And he straight up calls his manager a thief. He's like, you are trying to steal all the credit from my work that I did. You are a thief. I worked so hard on this. And at that point, the higher ups are like, okay, all right, clearly we need to settle this. And at that point, you know, when the higher ups above his boss start to be like, whoa, okay, what's going on here? The manager, instead of just being like, okay, listen, obviously this was a little bit more of a team effort than I had said. Maybe I exaggerated a bit or whatever, trying to walk it back at all, decides to like double down and try to look tough in front of all these other bosses. And so he tells him, he's like, you did not contribute anything to this project. In fact, I would say that I was the one who had to be in the office late nights messing up or fixing all the stuff that you had messed up during the day. So I think, if anything, you owe me an apology for trying to make me look bad in front of my higher ups. And the subscriber is like, bro, come on. Like, all right, man, listen, I understand you want to look good in front of your bosses, but if you're going to like quadruple down, on the fact that you did all this work I'm done and the rest of his team members that like know he had done all the work and were also under this manager they're just being quiet right they're not really standing up for him so he doesn't know what to do like if it's his word against the manager obviously the odds are he's not gonna win that battle you know it sucks it just is the way that it is the company's gonna go with the person that's been there longer if it's a 1v1 and so because none of his co-workers are standing up for him and his boss just keeps being like no you're lying I'm the one that did all the work he does what the only thing he thinks he can do in that situation, and he just walks out of the office. He's like, fine, like, I'm just gonna go to my car. And so he gets up and leaves, and as he's leaving, his manager is like, where do you think you're going? We're not done with this conversation. And he doesn't reply to him, he doesn't say anything, he literally just walks out, you know. And as he's walking out, he hears him behind him yelling, and he just keeps walking. All right, guys, I'm gonna interrupt the video for just one second. If you take a look at your screen, you'll see a gift card code. For those of you that don't know, I give one of these away in every single video, and I'd really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. And uh, yeah, press the like button. Your mom's a hoe. Let's get back to it. 
Anyways, his manager follows him out of the building on his way to the car, and he's talking to him, and he's like, you need to be more of a team player. It's not all about getting credit for what you want to get credit for. Like, obviously, this presentation means a lot to the company, so maybe you need to be more of a team player. And he literally turns around and is like, dude, are you kidding me? Like, I was being a team player when I was working 90-hour weeks. I was being a team player when I came in during my birthday because you threatened to fire me over it. I've been a team player the entire time. All I wanted was the credit for the work that I did. I did all of the work on the advertising pitch. I did all of the work on the strategy. And then we go in there, and instead of just avoiding saying who does it, you take credit for it. And he's like, well, yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. You want the credit for it. It needs to be a team thing. And he can't believe that his manager is saying that. And he reminds him again. He's like, dude, listen to yourself. You're saying that I'm crazy for wanting credit for what I did, but you took credit for what I did. So aren't you more obsessed with it? And he's like, yeah, but I'm your higher up, so you just kind of have to deal with it. And at that point, the subscriber is just done. And he gives his boss an ultimatum. He's like, look, you either need to go back in there, go into the meeting, and tell every one of those bosses that I did the work and you didn't actually make any of it, or I'm going to quit. And his manager looks at him and goes, mm, actually, you're fired. Welcome to business. Get out. And obviously, he's kind of shocked here. Like, this guy was so insistent on getting all the credit for the work that this guy did that he literally just was like, okay, you're fired then. If, if my option is either go in there and tell them that I did take credit for your work, or you quit, then you're fired. And at that point, he's like, all right, fine. And he just gets in his car and leaves. And the entire way home, he's just thinking about it obviously as you would being like what just happened i cannot believe that this dude literally just tried to like fire me he did fire me he's gonna get credit for all the hard work that he made me do he made me leave my birthday he made me work 90 hour weeks and he's going to get all the credit for it and so he goes home and he's like dude and what's even worse is that it looked like the higher ups above his boss were loving it you know it really could have been a situation where he got a bunch of credit and looked really good and maybe advanced his career but now here he is jobless and he's thinking about the fact that it was the next day they were going to go present it to the client, you know, like they were going to take it and, and present it for the pitch to get the money. And so he goes to sleep and he wakes up and he just decides to like go on his computer and start looking for a new job. But for some reason, he has this feeling to like check his Google Drive, right? And he doesn't really know why, you know, obviously it's not like there's anything important in there for him. He doesn't have a job anymore, but he just can't shake the feeling that he's supposed to check it. He's checking his email, look in your drive. He's checking, watching YouTube, look in your drive. And so finally he goes over and he's like, all right, reluctantly opens the Google Drive. And that's when he realizes why he had been having this feeling that he should go look the entire time. Like I said, he had done literally all the work on this advertising project, right? From start to finish, he had done literally all of it. So one of the things that he had done to make his life easier when he's working from home is he had put it in his Google Drive. All of the, you know, the, the graphics, all of the ads, everything is in his Google Drive, not the company's drive. When you're working on the computers at the company, then you put it on their stuff. But he had done all the work, you know, over time by himself. So he basically is like, oh, this is mine. And because he's fired, he no longer works there anymore. It's not their property. And he realizes that they're going to need all of the stuff in this Google Drive if they're going to actually present his advertising pitch to this company. So he just goes in, removes everybody's access from the files, and then deletes it uh, before they could, like, back it up. And basically, before anyone's like, yeah, that's petty. Yeah, obviously it's petty. But if his boss is going to fire him to take credit for it, then, like, they don't deserve the work in the first place, you know? It's their fault for making this guy do all the work, like, overtime and it being on his drive in the first place. So if he's not going to get the credit, then I guess they're just not going to get his work. And so he deletes the Google Drive and instantly just, like, feels great, right? I'm sure that's a great feeling. You guys are going to fire me and take all the credit for my work? Then fine. You just don't get any of my work. How about them apples? But to make it even better, right, he assumes, listen, either they're not going to have access to it, but somebody at the company has to have been smart enough to make a copy. That's his thing. He's like, whatever, they can't use my version. But there's literally no way that this company hadn't made a backup of everything at some point, right? But after about 15 minutes of deleting the file, his phone starts blowing up. It's just ringing like crazy, and he looks, and he realizes it's his manager. And he answers, and he's like, what do you want? What are you doing? That's our property. You deleted all of the stuff for 
clear the advertising docket. Da 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 da. What's wrong with you? Why would you put the company in this position? That's borderline illegal. You're lucky I don't sue you. And he goes, dude, all right, first things first, don't yell at me. Second things second, it's my Google Drive. It wasn't in the company's drive at all. So it was my property. And also, I don't work for you anymore. So I don't have to give you any of the stuff that I did. You know what I mean? Like you were making me work overtime. I was doing it on my Google Drive on my computer. I didn't really use company equipment for it. So no, I don't have to let you have it. Nothing I did was illegal. And his boss is like, fine, whatever, but just give it back. Like, do you understand that you're putting the team in a rough position here? And he goes, well, I'm not putting the team in a rough position. If you really did all the work, then you should have a backup somewhere. And at that point, the guy is kind of like, oh, crap. If they don't have this ready for the presentation, they're going to realize that he didn't actually do the work. And so immediately the manager starts like groveling to get him to come back. Well, what do I have to give you to come get your job back? Like, I'll do anything. I'm sorry. I'll never try to take credit from you again. And he's begging him to come back because he realizes that he's probably going to get fired and not get the client if they get in there and he doesn't have it because the managers are going to put two and two together and go, wait, you really did take it from that kid, didn't you? And so obviously the kid's sitting here with a choice and he feels bad for the guy, but you know, he's also not going to go back to it. And he's like, no, I, I don't want to work for you guys anymore. And his manager is like, please, man, I, I know we can work something out. He doesn't even give him a chance. He just kind of hangs up as you do. If you want to fire me because I asked for credit and you were going to take it all. Yeah, I, I'm not going to come back and work for you again, dude. You already showed me what you were going to do once. I'm just going to trust you. I tried to trust you and you took all the credit for the work I did before, dude. And so he kind of immediately starts applying for jobs, but he's like, ah, oh, that was great. And so he gets an interview relatively quickly with another advertising company and he's talking to him and they're asking him for his experience. And so he kind of is like, yeah, I made this, this, and this. And part of his portfolio that he was showing them of stuff he's made was the stuff for the company. And they're like, wow, this is really great. How did you know that they're still looking for somebody? And he's like, oh, I didn't know. And that's how he found out that they didn't figure it out. Like they hadn't made a backup. They got to the meeting and probably didn't have any of the stuff to present because they were still looking for somebody to make an advertisement for them. So the guy ended up trying to take credit from probably one of his best workers, fired him when the worker asked for credit, and then probably got reprimanded, fired something, I'm assuming, when they were like, wait, you did take it from the worker and then blew it when we had the opportunity to actually score the marketing budget. I don't know about you, but if I own that company, I would not be too happy with the guy that cost me like, you know, a couple million dollars in advertising spending. But regardless, I just thought this story was awesome. Don't treat your employees like crap if you got them and they probably won't delete the Google Drive before you got to go present a bunch of stuff. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Turn on notifications. I'd really, really appreciate it. If you really want to help me out, I'll put a link to the intro song down below along with a link to my podcast, The Scuffed Cast feel free to go check that out and of course you could use code scrubby at the g fuel checkout great way to get a discount on g fuel and help me out i'd very much appreciate it and last but certainly not least, I got two more things that I got to shout out. First things first, I did go ahead and put some of my story times up on Spotify. So if you want to check that out, a link will be in the description. Be sure to go do that if you don't want to watch the gameplay, list it offline, all that good stuff. And we got the Karen Christmas sweater, which might be the coolest merch to ever exist. This link's going to be in the top of the description. But if you want to get festive and show those Karens who's boss, then uh, be sure to go check that out. I would appreciate it. And uh, yeah, on that note, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot, and hopefully I will see each and every single one of you guys next time with another video. I'm out. Peace.